Hey everybody, welcome back to Laptop Seniors. Today another short, uh, hopefully short anyway, and uh, specific one item video that I think if you're retired or even an expat and you're not retired and you're doing slow traveling and that type of thing across the world, this is gonna help you a lot and it's about banking. Now there's four things that usually come up with foreign bank accounts. If, then let's just say you're an American or Canadian or somewhere else and you wanna open an account some other country. One, they're hard to open. Number two, if you're in a foreign country, it can be hard to move money there and expensive. Number three, you may or may not lose money on the exchange rate at the time that you're having to have the money versus some other different time. You know, and there's no way around that usually. And number four, and this is a big one, the bank that you have in another country may not be all that financially solvent. And maybe one where ultimately you don't really want to have very much money in because they may not be there, you know, in a crisis. There are other things that come up, but those are the main things that continually come up. And I'm gonna show you how to solve all of those at one shot. Now, the way to do that is one particular bank, and I don't get anything for this, they don't know I'm doing this, and that bank is HSBC Bank. They're a worldwide bank. If you're in airports, you always see them everywhere in airports, and they truly are the world's bank. And I'll tell you why you want to lean on moving to those. Now, the first one, let's go back to those four things, okay? Hard to open. Typically, you have to go to a country, you know, if you don't have a visa there. If you have a visa there or you have a, you know, you're a resident there or something, it becomes easier. Still, a lot of paperwork and stuff like that. But at least you can open a bank. But if you are not a resident of a particular country, depending on the country that it is, they might not want to open a bank account for you at all, or they're going to make it incredibly difficult, or, or and or, usually it's and or, you have to literally go to that country and show up at the bank. And that costs a lot of money. Like, you know, say you wanted to open one in Australia. Okay, that's a long ways to go. And you're, you know, you've got to stay there for a while and stuff. You're, you're out three, four thousand dollars just to open a bank account. With an HSBC bank, if you have an account somewhere, like in the US, as an example, you go to the bank, you ask for the banker, and you go, hey, I want to open up a bank account in Australia, or the UK, like London, or Singapore, or Hong Kong, wherever, Mexico, and they'll help you do it. They'll vouch for you. They get it done for you. It takes a while. It might take a month, maybe two months and stuff as the paperwork goes back and forth and things, but ultimately, you don't have to go, and they're vouching for you it eliminates that process. So there's one gone, okay? Now let's move on to number two. If you're in a foreign country, it's work sometimes, and certainly expensive, can be really expensive, to move money from one country to another. So let's now let's say UK. Let's make believe you're in London for a second. Although again, it could be somewhere else. It could be Thailand for that matter, um, you know, where you retire or uh, Malaysia or whatever, okay? You have an HSBC bank account in the United States. Okay, there's where you bank. And in there you have checking and savings, the typical stuff. Say you want to send US dollars to the UK, but the UK uses pounds, right? Well, okay, that's not good. But they allow you, the UK, to hold different currencies in their account. So it's not just US checking and a US savings. If you're in the UK, you could have a US savings account. You could have euros. You could have the British pound, obviously, because you're in England. You could have the Chinese yuan. You could have the Singaporean dollar. You can have Mexican pesos. You can have a whole dearth of, uh, like that word, dearth? You could have a whole dearth of different currencies. That's the way the bank operates because they're in so many different countries. So you could take your US dollars and send them to England and keep them in US dollars, or you could flip them into British pounds. Now I'll come back to that in a second, okay? So how do you do that? Well, it's super, super simple. When you have an HSB account in one country and you happen to have another country also, when you go online in either of those countries, because you know they're gonna be separate from each other, you go into the UK one, you're gonna see the US account. If you go into the US one, you're gonna see the UK account. And if you happen to have, a, like say, a Singapore account too, you'll see all three of them in any one of those you know, countries when you go online. And if you want to send money from one to any one of the other ones, you just go to, oh, US, US let's make believe you're in the US now. You go to your US checking, you know, you check checking on the pull down, I want to take money out of checking, 
and I want to send $2,000 to somewhere. On the pull down, you're going to see the other countries and the other countries' accounts. And at that point, you can choose, well, what do you want to do? Well, I want to send US dollars to US dollars because I want to skip the exchange rate for the moment and send it to England or send it to Singapore. And US dollars will move from the United States to England or Singapore, wherever you send it, instantaneously, like within a half a second, boom, they're in your other accounts. You don't have to wait for five days or 10 days for the money to clear, and there's no fee. It's free. Okay, that's a big deal. So you eliminate the fees and you eliminate the time. It makes sending money super easy. You don't need wire transfers where you have to pay for those, sometimes a lot. You don't need bank fees in another country, which some can, some can be like super crazy amounts, like $25 to send 100 bucks because that's the bank fee. Okay, you can skip all that stuff. And the money gets there, you know, instantaneously. Number three, to just go back to what I just said, you may lose money on the exchange rate going from one country to another because maybe you're living in the second country and you're sending US dollars and at that point, the US dollar to whatever that other country's exchange rate is might not be all that good, okay? And you might think, well, right now the US dollar is down, this other country's currency is up or vice versa and you wanna play it either way. But you can go, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my U.S. dollars and I'm going to, to the other country and I'm going to keep it in U.S. dollars in that other country. And when the exchange rate reverses and all of a sudden the U.S. dollar is real strong, then I'll flip my money. I'll make the exchange then. And so basically you can game the system on currency exchange. You know, so you can do it that way or you can do it the other way around where the U.S. dollar is super strong and you do the exchange right then and there and you send money to the other country in that other currency and let it sit there in the other currency because at some point you're going to need euros or british pounds or singaporean dollars or you know M M malaysian uh, i forget what they have ringgits something like that anyway so you can work that whole thing and actually save money i saw this documentary it was a british documentary which was kind of ironic because you know, hsbc banks you know world headquarters is actually in london even though really the bank is in hong kong so what this documentary was pointing out was that hsbc bank at times does work with unsavory characters and they named a few of them you know like the cartels and they you know maybe have you know, accused of money laundering and they paid big fines like millions if not billion dollar fines okay and you know and that's a lot what the documentary was about but here was the interesting part this was what i got out of it okay because i'm thinking like oh i don't money laundry i could care less uh i don't just you know i'm not a cartel i could care less i'm not this that and the other thing i could care less i didn't really care but what I heard was, and they went out of their way to point it out because they were showing how big HSBC Bank is and how sort of the way they called it, their tentacles were into everything. Governments, um, banking, you know, financial markets, everywhere around the world. And their end result of that was that HSBC is way too big to fail. No country on the planet will allow that thing to go down. Now, let me repeat that again. <laughs> No country in the world will allow that bank to go down. Now, when I heard that, I'm going, wow, where do I want to put my money? In this bank that I don't really know anything about, or I'm going to put my money into a bank where no country will allow it to fail? I'm thinking like, yeah, I'm going with that because I know the bank's going to get bailed out, and I'm not going to lose my money if you had a lot of money there. So something to bear in mind okay maybe that kind of a, for a weird reverse reason but here's another reason too because vivi and i we opened uh, hsbc bank accounts in australia um when we were there we, we went there on her birthday she wanted to go for her 60th birthday so okay fine we'll go but before we did it i was sort of curious about the bank itself so i was looking up other banks that were within you know australia okay and uh, you know, because it wasn't, it was the first one I had done in a different country through that process with HSBC, that kind of thing that I was describing, okay? So I'm looking and I'm going, here's the minimum requirement of, of hold for the bank, the capital that the bank has to keep in it. Um, and I'm not sure if it was by law for Australia or if it happened to be that 
that was the rules of the HSBC Bank in Australia. But let me, before I tell you what that is, I'm going to tell you what it is in other countries, okay? So the capital requirement, like in the U.S. Bank, I keep pointing over here like if there's a U.S. over here, but for a U.S. Bank or a Canadian bank is somewhere around between 2 and 3%. Or to put it in a different terms, if you walked into a U.S. bank or a Canadian bank and you handed them $100 and say, put this into my savings, they're going to loan out $97 of that 100 okay? $97 is gone. Somebody else has that money for, and it might be for um, house loans, car loans, somebody's opening up a business, a risky business, whatever. Point being, that money could disappear. Somebody could go down and they don't pay that money back. And $97, now the bank is on the, on the hook for that $97. That means there's only $3 left if there's a run on the bank and a whole bunch of people, something happens in the economy and people all want to go get their money out, like what happened in that, that bank in Silicon Valley and a few others around the U.S., the banks go broke. They, they close and that's it. And then, you know, and then it's a horror show as to how much money of your own money you're going to get back if you're anywhere above the FDIC or the insurance of the country that you're in. But in Australia, it was 30%. Not 90% is loaned out, 70% is loaned out. So there's 30% of the assets of the bank still in the bank. And 30% of, you know, hundreds if not billions of dollars in a bank in the country, there's no way a run is going to eliminate that bank. The bank will be still standing, you know, no matter how big that run is, it's just not going to knock it down, okay? So again, whoo, safety in numbers and safety in a lot of money in the bank. Now, I don't know what it is for all the HSBC banks, so you might want to ask at the time, but I, I certainly know like numbers like that in Hong Kong and Singapore and a few other countries are like that. Like right now, by almost everybody's standards, we used to be Switzerland. Now it might be close to a tie, but most people at the moment when it comes to banking, Singapore is the new Switzerland. That's where your money is the safest. That's where the banking is the freest. And also to go all the way back to number one, and then I'll end this, about opening account if you did not have a bank account at an HSBC somewhere else and you wanted to open a bank account in Singapore for a lot if not all of the banks and certainly is for the HSBC when we went into the you know, bank there and we you know inquiring and checking it was a half a million dollars that you needed to deposit into the bank before they would consider opening a bank account for you. A half a million dollars. I think it's 750,000 to a million now. Again, if you're a Singaporean or you know you're, you have a visa and you're living there, sure they will, but it still might be a pretty decent chunk of cash, way more than anything at a normal bank, to, um, you know, to open an account. And that's because they're super safe and super stable and they're great banks. Like they really take care of you. For me, if you're thinking about foreign banking, if you can do it and it matches the countries where you, that you care about or you're wondering about or you need, I would hardly recommend HSBC, eight, can't say HSBC Bank, despite the documentary. You know? Foreign banking, it can be like an open pit of, uh, of things to know. If you like this video, hit the like button. And also if you like our channel overall, certainly hit the subscribe button. That's great. And of course, there's that notification bell to know when the next video comes up, okay? And for all of that, thank you very much for watching. Really appreciate it. Ooh.